Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wild Wilder Weekly Wrap. As always, I am Wild Wilder. I had a really, really busy two weeks at work, and I wasn't able to kick out a weekly wrap last week, as I'm sure you all noticed. But the good news is, is I was so busy that I really only managed to do one week worth of things in two weeks of time. First things first, I beat Stalker Clear Sky. I say beat, uh, the final encounter was bugged and broken and just didn't function on my game save and I could not find a point to roll it back to where it worked and there's nothing I could conceivably do to fix it and the internet says the final encounter is very, very buggy, which is pretty much par for the course for my remembrance of Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl as well. So that was disappointing. I'm gonna play some footage of the final encounter over my description of the events, so definitely spoiler alert, but I won't talk about why I'm doing any of this, so it's also an old game. If you really, really, really don't want to just physically see the ending level area of Stalker Clear Sky, go ahead and skip forward. Otherwise, you're fine. So, in this final encounter, you have to shoot this guy over here with a special gun that depletes his electro-psychonetic shield thing for reasons that are complicated. As you can see in the top right corner, he has a health bar, and when I shoot him, the health bar goes down. Well, we speed forward to the final part of the fight where he's climbing this ladder, and I can shoot him all I want, and he won't die. And that's just that. Like, that's 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 the bug. That's what's going on. I looked it up. There's supposed to be a voice cue when you get down to, like, one shot where a guy on your radio says one more shot should do it or something like that. And that never happened, and it doesn't happen, and I can reload sort of the previous autosave because it autosaves at the beginning of each stage, and it doesn't matter. Like, so it's just broken. And that's really, really disappointing. And the last level is just that. And seeing as all you have to do is deplete his health. I've watched some YouTube videos where he'll be in different areas. So it doesn't actually even have to be on that ladder for it to happen. So I'm not super worried about missing anything. Because, I mean, you can see it. I got his health down to one shot. And I shoot him and he doesn't die. So... I did what literally anybody else would do, being on the last level of a game that they know, in their heart, they beat. And I looked up the final cutscene, which is creepy, and weird, and disturbing, and feeds directly into the game that this is a prequel of, Stalker of Shadow Chernobyl, which is great, but it's also a terrible ending for a game. Like, this is truly the problem with prequels. It's just weird and bad, and does not leave... A good taste in your mouth. And I won't say what happens, because you could look up the cutscene yourself and be creeped out by it, and it's just awesomeness. But uh, that is that. I had a lot of fun. I'm not going to give this game a rating because it's like 15 years old and it's buggy, and I think this might be one of the first things that I like in a way that my simplistic 1 to 10 rating scale doesn't fully describe because I can't tell you why I find it captivating. I will try after I beat the third game. If anybody watching this video has played the Stalker games and you also weirdly fell in love with them in a way that is inexplicable and you can only really relate to other people who have played the Stalker games, can you leave just some thoughts in the comments? This week, Hank Green's comedy special was released on dropout.tv. Now, I know Hank Green from his character in the Dimension 20 season, Mentopolis, which is excellent, by the way, and I absolutely highly recommend it. I didn't learn until recently that he's actually a YouTuber, which is, I guess, embarrassing for me because I'm a YouTuber. But yeah, I saw Hank Green pop up on my little feed and it was like something about boiling water and I was like what and he's got like he's got a serious YouTube channel that's where he's from so that was interesting anyways he has a comedy special and it's called pissing out cancer this is one of those shows where somebody talks in a comedic way telling a comedic story about a very difficult part of their life namely Hank Green got cancer and the roughness and toughness and everything that comes with that. 
And I found so much of it compelling because of my own medical problems recently. Especially he has a part about how the medical system gets really, really, really efficient in very specific ways when you have very specific injuries. And I experienced that too. And it was just, it was a lot. It was good to watch, but it, but it was a lot. Um, I'd recommend watching it. It's hilarious. It could be a little hard. If cancer is a sore subject for you, you know, take care. And uh, you might need to turn it off or you might not. It's it's very, very fair and even. And he even talks about that in the bit about how he wants to be very sure that while talking about his journey with cancer, that he respects other people's journeys with cancer. And now it's time for the train game of the week. This week's train game is Sunless Skies. Sunless Skies is a surreal, gothic, horror, role-playing game slash resource management simulation. Um, it's wild. It's absolutely wild. I have loved the tiny fragments of bits of this game that I have played. I tried playing its predecessor, Sunless Seas, but I found the UI to be completely impenetrable and confusing. Things are so much clarified and streamlined in Sunless Skies, and I love it. And one day I might go back to Sunless Seas now that I understand sort of the genre of game they've created. In Sunless Skies, you take the role of a train captain in charge of leading your locomotive across the cold void that is the Sunless Skies. Quick aside, it, it, the game isn't about a train. You just have a locomotive. There are no carriages attached to it. This is something that like distracts me personally when people call things trains. Like there's an engine and there's carriages and together they make a train. But please, please, please don't let yourself become stuck on that tiny technicality like I've allowed myself. There are things I really love about Sunless Skies. The first is how character management works. As you level up, you add things to your character's backstory, where they came from, what they've experienced. These explain how you have skills that might not necessarily match with your actions so far in the story. I think that's really, really cool and a really way to get non-congruent actions to give skills for something that you feel you might desperately need. Gameplay consists mostly of making decisions almost entirely of making decisions and the consequences that will always be felt by your decisions in one way or another. And there's just sort of this feeling that everything is getting worse. You also get to drive a train around and shoot stuff. That's also there, but let's be honest, it's mostly going to places and making a whole bunch of decisions, going to the next place, making a whole bunch of decisions. There's not a lot of in between other than that is where most of the time of the game takes place, not most of the play which may sound weird, but if you were to play the game, you'd, I think, understand what I'm trying to say. It has a dark, gloomy atmosphere that I absolutely love. One of the best parts of the game is the music. It manages to be spooky and melancholy all at once. The first time I opened the game, I was simply captivated by the title music on the title screen. And I just sat there for a few moments and it was great. I recorded a bit because I thought about playing it here, but this is YouTube. You can just look up Sunless Sky's title screen music and you will get the title screen music. So I will leave you to that. I really like Sunless Skies. Uh, for the time I've played it, I give Sunless Skies an 8 out of 10. That does it for this week. Nothing is presently in the YouTube pipeline. I've been recording some stuff, but I'm not telling you what yet. And it's a holiday here in the US, a good old fashioned holiday this week. There's also an election in the UK. So if you're in the UK and watching this, please go vote if you can. It sounds like there's an opportunity to um, reverse the course of UK politics this week in a way that everybody in America will be jealous of. So do that, I suppose, if you can. And thank you for watching. As always, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.